All right, welcome YouTube to a Board Avengers side mission is what we're calling it today. I know last time I called it something else. Don't worry about last time. It's better this time. So my name is Jason and I am D20 Woodworking and I am here today with Roberto and Dave. Gentlemen, thank you for taking the time to be here today. I appreciate it. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> All right. So uh, today we're kind of talking accessories. We're talking accessories themselves. We're talking uh maybe a little bit of the business side. We're talking all aspects of it. But before we dive into that topic, uh, uh, first, Dave, introduce yourself. Talk a little bit about yourself, your history, your experience. Uh, who is Dave? What is Game Foundry? Sure. Uh, so I'm a gamer in Southern California. Um, been collecting and playing games for, I guess, close to a decade now. Um, and over the course of that, uh, started to try to figure out how I could get my games to the table faster and uh, started um, first with you know foam core inserts and that sort of thing. And then eventually found 3D printing, which I've been doing now for close to three years. And um, over the course of that, um, started to offer some of my designs that I've 3D printed on Etsy. And that's where I have my shop Game Foundry. And I'm also Game Foundry on Instagram and you can find me there. Fantastic. Roberto, what about yourself, man? Uh, Roberto? Sheer boredom, horrible for SEO. And I think I'm going to start <laughs> just saying that I got to put it on, on my business card. So you can't find me online. You can't just type in sheer boredom and find me. Because sheer, I'm a hairstylist. So sheer like scissors, boredom like board game. Mm -hmm. I do uh, interviews, reviews, dots, all sorts of stuff um, on Instagram. I review board games with my fiance, Kate, on YouTube. And do my, inter my, my interviews are also on YouTube under sheer boredom table talk. Of course, sheer again, like scissors board like board game <laughs> um and i'm happy to be a part of this chat because one of the first things that we do when we buy games is upgrade them yeah. and that's how actually we, we met dave we one needed an insert and uh dave hooked us up many many moons ago now we've known each other for a little bit so here we are fantastic and my name is jason i run d20 woodworking uh, i'm on youtube instagram I can't believe I'm about to say this. I'm on TikTok now because that's where the kids oh. are. Uh, the young the folks. Kids, the, yep. the young, but you got to do it for the, for the youths. Yeah, the I got to do it for the youths. Um, I'm all, <laughs> I also stream over on Twitch and, and playing different games and whatnot. And I also, uh, I still make board game accessories and just component holders, card holders, things made out of wood. Go figure. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited for this conversation because I, I think there's two interesting aspects here because I know, R Roberto, you spend a lot of time upgrading your stuff and making it nice. And I kind of want to dive first into that. I want to dive into the mindset of when you get that, that new game, what's like the first thing you think about upgrading? Is it coins? Is it sleeves? Is it inserts? You know, where does your mind go with that? I've been, I've been yelled at that I don't <laughs> sleeve my cards. So I, I don't ever sleeve my cards. Um, I only sleeve my cards if this will be part the two, right game here. comes with it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, I think we, we got Merchants of the Dark Road that came with sleeves, Space Base, the Command Center came with sleeves. Mm -hmm. So if it comes with sleeves, then I will sleeve them because they're there for me to use, but I'm not mm -hmm. going to go out on my way to sleeve cards. I just, I don't know, I just don't feel like I need to have that feeling in my hands. Mm -hmm. But the first thing we do is always coins. If we can find an upgraded coin for whatever or some type of currency some type of upgrade upgraded currency because i just like the the tink 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 of right. the metal mm -hmm. or the or the iron clays right the, the poker chips mm -hmm. those just something substantial in your hand other than hey, i'm just gonna buy something for a little uh scrap of cardboard right so that's that's the first thing we do is always upgrade our money so I'm just going to interject and say that at some point we're going to have a board Avengers Civil War video, and it's all going to be about <laughs> sleeving or not sleeving your cards. And we're, it's, it'll be interesting to see whose team sleeve and whose team naked. <laughs> I, I, Roberto, I hate to tell you, man, I, you might be by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think mean, I, I might I be. I, I wish you luck. I mean, I hope yeah. you do well, but we're going to crush you. Um, yeah. <laughs> Well, it's a good thing I can do this all day then, right? <laughs> uh, okay. Poor adventures jokes. Um, yes. Okay. So Dave, when, when you, you know, started your business, were there certain games you were looking at that you're like, man, I really want an insert for this specific game? Or was it a common problem you saw across multiple games that you said could easily be kind of 
not fixed with one insert, right? Not one insert fits in the many, but you know, was it one specific that triggered it or was it kind of spread out just like, this is a common problem, I wanna fix this. Sure, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's pretty pervasive. There are some games that come with a decent insert. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some games that, um, you know, maybe they don't have that many components that they really need much more than a couple of baggies. But as soon as you start to get like six different resource types with 20 of each resource and several different cards, uh, player boards, uh, before you know it, uh, there's yeah, just a big mess of components in there. And mm -hmm. even if you do baggies to separate them out, what I was finding uh, is just to, to dump everything out and then what baggie did it come from? Like I'd, right. I'd leave one resource in each baggie. So I'd remember which size baggie I had to put things in. <laughs> and it was just, there was something elegant about being able to just pull trays out that had everything in it it's all set up and ready to go you know and i i started with the the wood components that i would get from some of the the original types of stores that are available online um or at, at cons and stuff and mm -hmm. you know i that's where i was i'd like to make my own because i can't afford to buy something for every game yeah. you know and you need to so i i, I yeah, I'm an architect is my background. So I, I've cut some foam core down in my day uh, back <laughs> at school and whatnot, right? So I started there, um, but the trial and error, you, you waste a lot of stuff that way. Um, uh, it's also really thick. So yeah. especially for smaller box games, it doesn't, doesn't work that well. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it's, it's serviceable. It's fine. Um, the stuff that you can get like pre-made out of foam core that you build those kits, they're, again, they're kind of chunky. So unless... Yeah. It, there's a lot of extra space in the box that they work fine. Um, but, you know, for smaller box games like, uh, you know, Tiny Epic or any of those other ones that have a lot of components and really do need some organization, yeah. but foam core is not going to work for that. Not even wood, which is almost eighth of an inch thick. You give up so much space with the material thickness. So I just, you know, kind of started it out of necessity of I, I want to organize more games, but I can't afford to buy something for everything. So I want to be able to make some for myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. now, that's a good part with um you know breaking it down putting it back together because that's what like i don't buy many inserts for games right but there are certain games where like spirit island took me forever to set that game up right and then mm -hmm. tear it back down and it's like i i brought the game out less because i didn't want to go through this hassle and i love the game so it became one of those things like okay i'll buy an insert for this and spend the money on it. it's not so bad but it really does make life easier than going through all those those little baggies and whatnot Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, if you if you have like an hour and a half to play and it's an hour long game and set up and take down or 20 minutes each, yeah, you can't play it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. But if you can cut that down to five minutes, you know, <laughs> boom, you're good. Yeah, yeah. So Roberto, when, when you buy upgrades, does it does it? This is always a weird thing that I have. Does it have to be like an officially licensed one? Or do you go for generic ones as well? Like, I don't want to call them knockoffs, but just like, you know, regular metal coins and not the scythe metal coins, right? They're just like regular metal coins. Are you, are you picky? Like I oh, am. Boy. Oh boy. <laughs> I feel like this is entrapment. Um, I don't have any coins that aren't, well, other than the iron clays right. that aren't game specific. Yeah. So I have, we have the Everdell upgrade. We have Everdell, we have um, underwater cities, we have viticulture, we have, Trickerian, we have we have a lot of metal coins in this house and they yeah. all just sit in a box mm -hmm. um so that's they are game specific i don't have i've seen the the coins that are kind of universal and you can use them yeah. whatever with whatever but just i don't know just something with if i'm playing underwater cities i don't want to have a coin with a dragon on it yes right because it, it, it for me it, that takes me out of the theme of the game or it takes me out of the game if i look at a, like why is there a dragon what currency there, yeah yeah. And I'm underwater. That makes no sense. Um, so that's what we try to go more game specific. We have all sorts of, of Garf, Garfield game, game um, coins mm -hmm. too, for the, for the <laughs> we have Viscounts, metal coins, and like that whole, the red box series. So we have all those. And so we definitely go game specific. That's, um, 
you know, it's funny because I, I bought whatever generic ones at first. I, I think it was to go in Scythe and I bought generic coins. I was like, ah, oh, this will be fine. They're way cheaper. But like they, 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 I think they had boats on them. If I want to remember correctly. And it was just like, I mean, there are flying boats if I play that expansion, but it's just like, it wasn't the same, right? Like it fell off and you're right. Like I thought the whole purpose at first of metal coins was just for like the weight. And that is a nice benefit. But for me, it was, it was just a little bit more thematic, just a little bit yeah. more, like it gets me in there a yeah. little bit more. So I, I think you're hundred percent right with that. So. Yeah. I, I like to have, uh, I mean, it's nice when you can do game specific coins. I do mm-hmm. have a few coins that are like, I have some that are kind of doubloon like, and they work really great with Libertalia and tiny Epic pirates. And then they also work really great with, um, like Arnak because they have mm-hmm. that kind of mm-hmm. stamped ancient feeling to them. Yeah. Uh, that thematically they work really well. I have some sci-fi coins that work great with like, you know, galaxy truckers, but it also works great with other space games where you have credits. Um, yeah. So it, I, I, I like game specific coins, but if I can get one that'll work with a whole bunch of different games and still be thematic to your point, then great. I find that the scythe coins just kind of reflecting on what they look like. Those are probably the most neutral yeah. Um, to to use throughout any mm-hmm. game because yeah. there, there aren't any. They just have denominations on them, and there yeah. aren't any weird mm-hmm. anything on them other than ones, fives, you know, threes, whatever. They have a, they have a fun hole in the middle. That's they awesome. do have a fun hole in them. Yeah. Oh, side, can... side note: Meg does have a necklace of the. I was gonna say you can make a yeah. jewelry necklace. You can make. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's like step three of the game, right? Like the first person to make yeah, a necklace absolutely. with the money wins and then you wear your victory. So, you know, it's, it's <laughs> a sweet setup. A little unknown rule. Um, so Dave, when you when you go back designing inserts for this, like how, I mean, I know you say you have an architectural background. How does that work? I mean, is it like a whole AutoCAD process here or is it, you know, starts with sketch drawing? Like, what is your process to do that? Yeah, so... Um... I'll, I'll sometimes do a little sketch, you know, mm-hmm. just kind of like try to conceptually say, okay, how might this work? Um, I ultimately take it into a 3D CAD program that's pretty accessible called mm-hmm. SketchUp. Uh, there's a yeah. free version. I, I have the pro version. Uh, it allows for some other kind of features, but you can get pretty far with it with the free version. Uh, other people use Tinkercad, which is similar, but s- same idea. Um, but, you know, what I try to do is just lay things out in a logical way where um, the storage components can also be used somehow in gameplay. So if it's a tray with resources, I want you to be able to pull it out and that'll dispense resources on the table. If it's a card holder, I want that if possible, you know, if you can kind mm-hmm. of make it work and everything fit that it's going to dispense the cards, maybe even have a discard tray. Um, so yeah, that it's functional both in the box and on the table as much as possible. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, just trying to get everything to fit and to fit elegantly as kind of the, the main goal. And then on top of that, if I have the ability to add some kind of thematic flourish to it, whether it's some kind of a sculpted detail or an imprint or a shape that ties in well with what the game's kind of aesthetic and theme is, then, then that's kind of a cherry on top of the Sunday. Interesting. So it, it, when it comes to the actual like 3D printing of stuff, because I I'll be honest, I know nothing about 3D printing. It's something I really want to yeah. get into because I I mm-hmm. I think a whole discussion we can have separately is I think this is going to be somewhat the the way of the future, especially with Kickstarter and mm-hmm. prices and how much it costs to ship you know a box of plastic mm-hmm. nowadays. Um, so I guess you know how did you get into 3D printing and is there a trial and error process or is it just once you have it in SketchUp, it, it's good and you know, it's going to print pretty well, or do you, do, do you have to go through revisions to get printed? There's definitely trial and error. And part of that is just, um, you know, as much as I try to measure everything out and have it fit perfectly and have all the components fit, you don't really know, um, especially when you're dealing with tolerances in the millimeters, like, did I get this exactly right? Yeah. Um, and like when I'm designing something for a tiny Epic game, like we're talking fractions of millimeters can make a difference. So there's so much jammed into those boxes. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, you're laying down that plastic at anywhere from, you know, uh, uh, 0.2 to 0.3 millimeters at a time to build yeah. it up. Um, so, you, you know, you've got some pretty good tolerances to play with. Um, 
you know, you can get things down pretty specific in terms of the size you're going for. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you, know, you could shape the wells and everything. You do little sculptural forms um, and all that. Uh, but yeah, it's it. There's definitely a trial and error process to get it all right and get it to fit. Um, yeah, you know, with with the the tolerances that you want. Yeah, it's, it always kind of fascinated with your business because mine is generic, right? Just holds cards. I mean, that's mm-hmm. all it does. It could, whatever card you want, it could fit it in there. So for me, it was just like, okay, figuring out the best way to do this, the right lengths, the uh, shipping costs and all that mm-hmm. fun stuff on top of it. So it, it always intrigued me with yours. I'm just like, it has to work for this product. And for mine, it's just like, well, it works for like 90% mm-hmm. of the products unless your cards are weird, you know? I don't know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so that stuff always kind of interests me on that. Yeah. You know, and the nice thing is if, if you're somebody who's just looking into getting into 3D printing to do for your board game accessories, there are literally tens of thousands of files that people have designed and shared online. I've shared some of my own designs uh, online for people to use um, if they have their own printer. I mean, I'm not taking business away from myself. If someone's right. got a printer, they're probably going to be printing something on their own. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, so I share a lot of my files that way. Um, but, um, you know, it, it's it, the price point has come down in the last five years significantly. You can get a 3D printer and be going and producing stuff for under 200 bucks nowadays um, with a, a little starter unit. There's a, a bit of a learning curve and it's a bit of troubleshooting that you have to do, not just initially to get things going right and to understand how your printer works and, you know, what the right kind of bed leveling settings are and temperature settings and everything. But just as things go, you know, you'll have errors with prints and things won't come out right and uh, mm-hmm. things will be all stringy and you, what's going on and you'll have to deal with nozzle clogs and changing the tube out and, and gears wearing down and lubrication and all that kind of stuff but there's so much in the way of resources online to help you through that and troubleshoot it uh, that it's if you're willing to be a little bit en- enterprising and do a bit of troubleshooting uh, it's a very accessible hobby yeah yeah fantastic so roberto when when you look at accessories right and uh, you're looking at Kickstarter, right? I, I, actually, that's that's what I really should ask first. Are you getting your yours from the Kickstarter pledge itself, or are you getting the game and then accessorizing after the fact if it's a game you really like? Right now, oh, this is another rabbit hole we can go down as far <laughs> as deluxe pledges that yeah. really do nothing for the game versus a you know a, the standee. I think we we have another talk about you know standees versus minis, right? Mm-hmm. Um, if, if there's a deluxe game that I'm interested in, I'm going to go the, the whole, the whole route as far as that. But that being said down the line, um, and for example, I'm just looking at my shelf here, merchants of the dark road, Kate hates that insert. A lot of people hate that insert. Mm -hmm. And I feel that that will, at some point we will probably get an insert for that game because it's not a good insert at all. Those components of Creek awesome components mm-hmm. quality of that game wonderful the insert not so much um so we'll go as deluxe as we can as far as kickstarter goes um but if we get anything if we get the game we feel like it needs a little something and of course this is for our own experience because we don't need to have an insert to make this game flow mm-hmm. a little better because the game is going to play as the game plays but to your point earlier dave if the game's an hour and it takes 20 minutes to set up and break down so that's another extra 40 minutes then it's going to turn us off to playing the game one of the things uh i really wanted to kind of pick your brain about dave and and, and, and this is a conversation in general i I think the three of us should have again in the future i I don't like making my youtube videos too long because i i tune out after a few minutes i get bored of me too um but um who who is this guy what yeah exactly (laughs) we can play we can play the game right now we're here with jason yeah right he's he's weird um but it is one I, I, I kind of want to go down the rabbit hole, but I want to tease this a little bit now, Dave, because I hope the three of us can maybe have this conversation later too of starting the hobby of 3D printing. And the reason being is because I kind of alluded to this a little bit is I think with the way shipping costs are happening, the way pricing is happening, that I could see companies selling the files to 3D print your own minis. I, I think this is going to be a thing to save costs and just be an option, right? You can get it professionally done or you can do it yourself. Um, and talking to some other people, it seems like I'm 
this is an original idea for me. Let me say that, <laughs> that I stole this from someone else. Um, so I think that brings up a thing where a lot of people say, well, I know, I know nothing about 3D printing, right? How do I get into this? What do I do? So let's say I'm me, which I am, and I have no idea how to 3D print. Dave, what would you tell me of how to start this process? <laughs> yeah, sure. So a couple of questions are going to come up first. First is what's your primary component type that you're interested in 3D printing? So if it's going to be miniatures, mm. you're probably going to want to look into a resin printer okay. as opposed to a uh, FDM printer, filament deposition, what the the you know the strand of plastic yeah. that gets laid down like I was describing. Um, the latter, the FDM printers, uh, filament printers are much better for like inserts. You mm. can print a larger area, prints it quicker. Um, I think material cost is gonna be cheaper, but the level of detail won't be what you can get from resin. So that's mm. why resin is really better for smaller stuff with a lot of detail. So if you're doing miniatures, like you're a D&D &D guy and all you wanna do is, you know, a whole bunch of armies of orcs and fighters and rangers and paladins and, you know, little bits of terrain with a lot of detail, it's probably going to be a resin printer. Mm. Thing with resin printers is you really do want to have it in a well-ventilated area mm. and you want to just have a way to kind of manage the chemicals that you use with it. Um, so I'm not really, haven't really done much in the area of, of resin printing myself. I've just mm. been an FDM guy because uh, I'm mostly doing inserts and other kinds of components like that. Mm. Um, that uh, tends to be a bit more affordable to get into. The materials are a little cheaper um, and uh, you can do bigger stuff. Uh, the mm -hmm. biggest one I have right now can do 12 by 12. I have one that I'm gonna be building soon that can do even bigger. It's gonna be almost 18 inches square. Um, but wow. with a 12 by 12 bed, you can print a ticket to ride size box, full wow. width insert. Wow. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of, you know, the, the sweet spot for the largest thing you're likely to print. Now, um, the kind of more entry level models, the ones I was talking about, like 200 bucks and less, like the Ender 3 is probably the most common, most popular um, printer in that class. Uh, that can do up to eight inches to a side, which is going to print probably 95% of what you'd be interested in uh, doing. So it's a really good place to start with. Um, and so it's just a matter of deciding budget wise, uh, how much do you want in the way of kind of features that'll automate it and, and overcome things like leveling issues. Uh, you can get uh, you know, auto bed levelers that it'll add a little bit of cost, uh, but it'll make it easier for you to you know, just kind of plug and play. Uh, filament run out sensors so you can set a print, walk away, not worry that you're gonna run out of filament, you know, your spool's gonna run out and then the thing's still going um, that can happen. And then, you know, yeah. So <laughs> that's happened a time or two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. See, my son, my son has an Ender Pro. Um, mm -hmm. And not that I didn't, not that I didn't, you know, re respect the hobby of, of, of what you were doing beforehand. I just have a deeper understanding now. And it's like, wow, it just kind of blew my mind because not only do you have to design and, and all the stuff, but I feel like with 3D printing, there's a mastery of patience there too, because you have to the, the trial and error, however long it takes to print out. I'm assuming a ticket to ride size insert is going to be a long print time. So you have to wait all that time. Um, so I def absolutely have a new appreciation for that as well. <laughs> all right. Well, very last question, Roberto, I'm going to ask you the hardest one of the night. Okay. So prepare yourself. It's going to be insane. Best upgrade you ever purchased ever. It could be a coin, it could be a play mat, it could be too many bones. I don't know. But <laughs> best upgrade you've ever you've ever purchased. Putting you on the best spot. Best upgrade <laughs> we've ever purchased. Um, I'm gonna go full send and say the board game table from boardgametables.com. Mm. Um, we love the well, it has a tabletop. We we can play a dungeon crawl underneath and then play something on top of it with tabletop, have dinner, strip it back, play a game. Yeah. That's probably, and I'm not, is that, is that cheating? Can I, no, am I allowed to say that? that? that absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Tables are accessories, yeah. especially since I play on like a regular folding table. It, that's an yeah. accessory for sure. <laughs> See, I was, I was going to say, cause you'd think it's a 3d printer for me and I love my 3d printers. Don't get me wrong, but my favorite, like the upgrade that I just love, that's really changed things is my game topper 
Mm. And it's not a standalone table, but with when the leg kit shows up shortly, it will be. Um, nice. But it's it's everything that you described, Roberto, but I can take it apart and take it to a friend's house like that, oh, too. That's nice. Which that's is nice. nice. So it's a great system. All right. I'll build a new table for myself so I can have these nice <laughs> things. Jeez. Don't right. you work with wood, man? Yeah, Why don't you how do you this? not this already the have a table? Dip. This big. This, this big. <laughs> not this big. This big. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I've built tables and every single time I finish one, I'm just like, never again. And then I see like those nice tables they make for board games. I'm like ah, one more time, maybe one more time. <laughs> so yeah, right. your table is going to have hidden components and like things you press buttons and like things fold out. And yeah, I can't I, wait to see your table, Jason. It, when it's you gonna make be, it. It's going to be the most amazing thing or the most basic thing. I don't know which I, in <laughs> two directions. Who knows? It's going to amaze everyone. Though. Um, all right, gentlemen. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me today. I do. Like I said, I want to do a part two because I want to dive more into other things. And I think this was a very good overview of everything. So Dave, Roberto, thank you both so much for taking the time to talk to me today. I really appreciate it. For those watching on YouTube still, and you made it all the way here. Let us know in the comments you made over here. What do you want to know about this part of the hobby? Do you want to know what more accessories we're into? Do you want to know what Dave does with his printings and what he does with leftover, not resin? What was the other thing that you call it? The, the filament. Fil filament. filament. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever it is, let us know down in the comments. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit like, all those fun things that you should have done already. And we will see you next time on the Board Avengers. Take care.